Hi friends, so you know I've touched on the issue of um, how there's been a pushback against political correctness and identity politics and I've done a video about three, about a week and a half ago, it's now August 30th, uh, 2019, I did, did a video about this um, in relation to Tulsi Gabbard and how Tulsi Gabbard was uh, said that um, one of the things that is uh, uh, threatening freedom of speech is political correctness and how I and I explained how that is a a dog whistle to the right dog whistle in quotes to the right and um, so I um, you know that that is something that actually is becoming it's not just something that is a pushback that's happening on the right um, who they just like to put down any sort of um, mention of political correctness any sort of attempt at political correctness because they do not want to see minority groups with equal rights but it's not just a, it's, the pushback against identity politics and political correctness is not just a, uh, a, a right problem. And at some point I'm going to talk about this whole right-left thing because um, there's so many uh, misrepresentations of what is left and what is right. I mean, if you think that, if one thinks that those in the Democratic Party are left, then one is completely uh, been sort of um, fooled, really. It's got nothing to do with left politics, what's happening in the U.S. Democratic Party. And um, there's a lot of people who say they're on the left and they're actually pushing back on identity politics and as, as it is presented by the U.S. Democratic Party, which is basically just an exploitation of identity politics. Because um, people in minority groups and black people, etc., they have every right to organize and they need to organize. Um, and so, you know, even though every everybody in any minority group or in, in any race needs to always keep the issue of class as an important thing and look at the broader issues, but they also need to organize themselves and push back against either racism or heterosexism, homophobia, transphobia, and so forth. So anyway, why I'm bringing this up again is because um, I've seen at least two people who are supposedly on the left, the commentators, who... Um, are pushing back on identity politics and also on political correctness. Um, and this is sort of becoming more and more common. And, you know, one can sort of say, what exactly do they think is going to happen when, it, what, what is the worst case, worst case scenario when identity politics, oh, sorry, when, when political correctness is in full swing? What is the worst case scenario? that people are not slandered and targets of violence, uh, that they'll, ha they'll have equal standing with them, equal rights. I mean, what is really the worst thing that can happen? And a lot of, um, some, some of, uh, like the corporate media, they like to appeal to drama. So they like to pick out and distort certain things. For example, uh, there's, there was this um, misrepresentation and completely um, misinformation about um, a teacher that was... Uh, he was um, sacked. I think he was from the UK, and he was sacked because he was he misgendered a student. Now that, if you look into that, uh, if you look into that issue, and you get past all the mainstream uh, propaganda and mainstream bigotry that misrepresented that issue, that teacher had repeatedly, again and again, intentionally misgendered a student that was a trans student, and. Uh, it was actually f abusive to that student who was just a child. They repeatedly did it as a means of um, humiliating and abusing a student who was a trans student. Now, if people don't understand what trans is, then and they're on the left, they really, really need to get on board with this issue. They really need to understand it. Because it's as if, if you're not homophobic, if you say you're not homophobic, then you need to get on board with this issue of, tra of trans, trans rights and what trans is. Because it's as important as not being homophobic. If you're not homophobic, then you need to understand what the whole trans thing is. Because it is as an important issue as um, any, any sort of gay rights, any LGBT issue is important, equally important. Trans is not some made-up thing. It is not some sort of agenda. It's not women dressing up as men and, and, and using that to go into women's bathrooms. It's not uh, an, an attempt by the radical left, whatever that means, that's another made-up thing, the radical left of all things, to uh, sort of take over and erase um, and, and destroy 
people's lives or whatever this trans agenda is that is just an absolute uh, nonsense. You know, it's actually intended to give people who are trans who are actually a small percentage of the population, but they're a significant percent, significant numbers. Children that are trans need protection, and they need protection from bullying, and they need protection from violence, and they need to um, to be understood so that they can live a full life with equal rights and equal regard. Is that so terrible? No, not really. It's not terrible. Does, do people have problems with protecting children? Because if you do, then what does that say about you? So we need to get on board with the trans issue and and really ignore the bigotry. I mean, in Australia, they, the Murdoch Press, is the Australian, which is a newspaper, has actually dedicated a section of the newspaper to transphobia, to actually um, promoting a whole lot of misinformation about the issue and promoting bigotry. That's, that's what we have here in Australia. This is what's wrong with a fourth estate that's pretty much dead because the likes of Murdoch um, have taken over and there's a consolidation in, say, the United States of, of six corporations basically owning everything, that kind of thing. If you don't have a healthy fourth estate, then democracy is pretty much dead and people are misinformed. And that's what's been going on now in relation to, now that marriage equality has finished, and of course there's still homophobia, it didn't solve homophobia, but now that marriage equality has gone through, the bigots and the, uh, and the, and the newspapers who want to, um, have to want to cause conflict and drama and want to support right-wing governments, um, or governments that have no spine, no offense to invertebrates, they, they've got on board now with the transphobia thing. It's gone from a switch from homophobia to transphobia. And I had the misfortune, I was talking about this, uh, you know, seeing these two left, um, I was supposed to be left uh, commentators, both engaging in transphobia. One recently, I'm sad to say, um, you know, was saying, was pointing out the fact that Obama had a, um, this is the quote from, from this particular person, a trans, a trans cross-dressing nanny. And the way he said it was a trans cross-dressing nanny. I mean, what's up with that? You know, as if that's some dreadful thing, like that the nanny was some sort of freak. And that made Obama even more suspect, you know, because he had a father, a stepfather who was engaging in genocide in Indonesia and stuff. Uh, then, then he had a trans cross-dressing nanny, in quotes. You know, as if, as if that makes him equally weird. I mean, this is so sad. This is, it exposes a complete uh, ignorance uh, from people who should know better, intelligent people, whom I admire. That's what is so shocking when you see people behaving like this and putting out this sort of bigotry, really, is what it is. It's just a ignorance and, and a bigotry. And, um, and then pushing back, you know, sort of having a problem with political correctness. I mean, you know, the, the media, if you believe everything the mainstream media says, they pick out the most extreme examples as if that's normal and as if that's the way of the future. Every group will have people that will have extreme, uh, extreme positions or or confused positions. There will always be people like that. that the, and that doesn't mean we should generalize about a whole group um, based on a couple of individuals who might have extreme views or, or d confused views or whatever. That's ridiculous. Doing that to any group is ridiculous. But that's what the mainstream corporate media likes to do. And anybody who has underlying bigotries about a group will go along with that. We'll be happy to go along with that. And that's unfortunately what I'm seeing with, some, uh, with many people on the left is either they're silent about it, which is probably better. If you don't know anything about it, then, you sh then it's good to shut up. But it's good to get educated about it so that you can, you can support these people, right? Trans people who need support with all the bigotry and the ignorance that's around. Um, but, but the worst thing is when people who are ignorant about the issue adopt the, these right-wing positions who are pushing back on everything, including pushing back on women's rights. They want a white supremacist, male, patriarchy, reinforced, and, and they don't want anybody, women or uh, LGBT people or black people and so forth, they don't want any of those people, Palestinians, they don't want any of those groups or races or whatever to actually uh, have any equal rights or any equal standing with them. So if, if, if the left is pushing back on, is presenting identity politics as if that's 
and as as the Demo- U.S. Democratic Party presents presents it, which is a ex- exploitation of that issue, right? It's an exploitation of LGBT people and of uh, black people, etc., pretending as if they're a party for the people, for diversity, which is a complete nonsense. And you only have to see that when you see the awful, awful policies they have. They're a neoliberal warmongering party who likes to bomb and kill brown and black people overseas, who's imperializing and co- colonizing Africa uh, more and more as we speak and so forth, killing black people every day in the United States, three a day by the police, and nobody goes to prison unless your name is Mohammed and you're black and you're a police officer. That's the only time, you know. So basically, if, if, the, if people on the so-called left, and I'm not talking about I'm not talking about the so-called pretend left in the Democratic Party, these liberals. I'm talking about people who call themselves left, who are socialist or whatever, but call themselves left and who are anti-imperialist and anti-war, and yet they're pushing against, they're presenting identity politics as if it's what the U.S. Democratic Party presents. Then you have to ask yourself why you're doing that. You have to look at really underneath it all. Why are you doing that? Do you? Maybe you have. Maybe you have some unaddressed bigotries or or just plain ignorance that and you and and it happens to sadly be white males that do this i'm sorry to say this but it's often white males and america and u.s citizens white u.s citizens males who tend to do this that's what i found so we need to ask ourselves why we're doing that and we need to ask ourselves why we have such a problem why we're we're almost touting the these right-wing uh, conservative bigots, we're almost on the same page as them when it comes to trans people. Really, we have to ask ourselves, why are we doing that? Why are we buying into that BS argument? And, and, and just not even, it's not even an argument. They're not even presenting any argument. It's just, just they bring up the issue of trans things. And when they do, it's always in some, uh, they're, they're presenting some completely out there something that's happened like i said it might be one person that they that's done said something extreme or done something stupid or it could be uh the mainstream media misrepresenting which is what they tend to do all the time with trans issues with you know lgbt issues in general they do it all the time so why on earth are these so-called left commentators selecting something from the corporate mainstream media that is false if you look into it that's like that teacher who was basically harassing repeatedly and humiliating a student who was trans intentionally and he got sacked you know but they don't present they don't tell you the whole story they just it's like oh he misgendered they do this in australia you know the the government here they like to um <clears throat> when there was i was involved in a campaign uh transforming tasmania it was called in uh it started in mid-July 2018, and it, it sort of basically went till about you know, March, and it's just f- finished with the, talking to the Tasmanian law reform about some things um, that, which they wanted to know. It's been something that's been pretty much successful in just getting some equal rights for trans people. That's all it was. No trans agenda, no trying to, you know, sort of... Um, take away from anybody, just trying to give trans children some rights, because children know, children know this about themselves. They know when something isn't right, when something is not um, correlating with the way they feel and stuff. They know these things. And support for these children so that, you know, I mean, this is the thing. We, we have to sort of like um, get educated about this. But anyway, um, what I'm, I'm get, getting off the track here, but what I'm trying to say is that um, I was involved in that, that campaign, saw lots of politicians with others. I'm, a, I'm an ally of trans people. And um, so, you know, I didn't actually speak or I didn't put my name on anything really. I just uh, went along to the meetings and supported people who are trans. And the point I was making was that the government who's in office right now in Tasmania is a right-wing bigoted government, and they lied all the time and misrepresented the issue and tried to obfuscate to make sure that trans people never got the rights that they deserved. 
That's what they tried to do the whole way through, right? And one of the things they tried to misrep- that they misrepresented was that trans people are trying to uh, are going to take you to court if you misgender them. This is the this is one of the BS arguments that they try to to frighten people. It's just a fear mongering thing. That is just a load of nonsense. It's a load of nonsense. So. You know, this is the thing. You've got the corporate media on side with the bigoted right-wing government here, and that's what they try and put out there to fearmonger. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is, why on earth would any left, so supposed left-wing commentator or left-wing activist go along with uh, corporate bigotry, corporate mainstream media bigotry? Um, I, I have no idea why. And I, I can only say that what are they actually afraid of with political correctness? What are they afraid of? What is the worst thing that can happen? And I've said before, I've lived through um, the 60s, 70s and 80s and part of the 90s where political correctness wasn't a thing and you could say whatever the hell you wanted about uh, LGBT people, I being from that group, and it wasn't fun. It was fucked, right? It wasn't good. It makes you a target of violence. It makes people be able to do whatever the, the hell they want to you. So what is it about, so political correctness is an important thing. It doesn't mean that people, just because they don't, uh, just because they aren't homophobic in public doesn't mean that they're not homophobic in private with their friends because that goes on all the time. But it does mean that it actually makes it not just something that everybody can just engage in and that's just fine and there's no consequences to that. Because trust me, there are consequences to people um, being homophobic, people being transphobic, people being racist, people being speciesist, people being heterosexist, people being classist, people being ableist. There are consequences to all those discriminations. All those discriminations cause violence. Look at speciesism. We have one to three trillion land and aquatic animals every year killed because we have a speciesist world where we think, where we've decided that animals are lesser because they're different. You know, and, and that's why I'm vegan. We have a, we have racism in the world, and it and it's pulled out when um, U.S. imperialists um, and the Western imperialists want to invade a country. Suddenly, we're vilifying Muslims so that we can go in and invade their country and kill them, or suddenly we're anti-Chinese so that we can, uh, you know, run China into the ground if we can because they're threatening us economically. I mean, capitalism is about competition. It's supposed to be, but it actually isn't. It's really about monopolies. And we we run down Russians because um, Russia has got some parity with nuclear weapons and uh, because they can see that the U.S. wants to invade and destroy Russia. So all of a sudden, we're, you know, putting down Russians in the media and making out like there's some evil sort of um, big hive mind sort of thing. You know, this is what racism does and you know it, it, it makes people targets of violence so if we're on the left and we're 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 having a problem with identity if we're having a problem with political correctness and we we want to just go around and um and just ignore the rights of different groups then what does that say about us and if we're we're sort of whinging on on um youtube channels and wherever that what an what an annoying thing political correctness is and we're a white male, then we need to ask ourselves, what on earth are we doing? What on earth are we doing? Propping up patriarchy and white supremacist stuff and trying to reinforce the dominant paradigm of um, heteronormative stuff so that we can keep these minority groups, I being one of them, keep them in their place because you can have a little bit of rights, right? Yeah, you're able to marry now. Oh, that's great. What a, what a wonderful thing. Now shut the fuck up. I mean, that's really, it sort of starts to become like that. Yeah, you've got your marriage equality thing now. Shut up. You know, that's all the rights you need. Because I'm in the heteronormative, heterose- you know, I'm in the, the heteronormative group and, you know, we don't, we don't want to have to think about that. It's too much effort to have to think about and be inclusive. That's what it starts to become. You know what I'm saying? It starts to become that. So if, you, if you're whinging, if you're on the left and you're whinging about political correctness or you're whinging about identity politics as it is presented by the um, U.S. Democratic Party, as it is exploited by them, and you're not giving any context to that, 
you're not explaining that the U.S. Democratic Party is not about is is just exploiting identity politics. If you're not doing, if you're doing all of that, then you need to ask yourself why you're doing it. Do you have some sort of fear of other groups getting some sort of equality, or that you'll have to consider them more, include them more, and that's just too much trouble? We have to really start examining where this pushback is coming from, and it's I've seen it more and more on RT. It's become like flavor of the month. You know, or flavor of the six months or whatever. It's, you know, it's it's on, it's it's sort of across the board. It's like it's almost like the right has given these people permission, some people permission, who are on the left to start whinging about it too. Because they didn't want to be out there in front, sort of looking like they might have some bigotry there. Anyway, I want to just read you a little tiny excerpt because this sort of when I read it the other day, I've, I've been reading this book. American Exceptionalism and American Innocence. It's a really good book by Danny Hapfong and um, Robert Siervent, and they're actually quite young, these two authors. Um, Danny Hapfong writes for the Black Agenda Report. You should check that out, particularly if you're a white activist. And uh, this, is the, this is them. They're quite young. Um, you can follow Danny Hapfong on, um, on Facebook, and he's on Twitter, I think, and all of that. But better just follow the Black Agenda Report. Blackagendareport.com, I think it is. Follow Margaret Kimberley, too. And uh, Ajama Baraka. And uh, Glenn Ford. There's a, there's a few. So anyway, I was reading the introduction, the foreword by Ajama Baraka, who, by, by the way, was the vice presidential candidate who ran in 2016 with um, Jill Stein. And... Um, he, he's a really eloquent writer, and um, he was writing the foreword for this book, American Exceptionalism and American Innocence, A People's History of Fake News from the Revolutionary War to the War on Terror. It's, it's a really interesting, and I'm looking forward to continuing to read it. Uh, so here's what I read, and I just, it, I just thought, this is exactly what I've been talking about um, in recent times. Uh, and this sort of, I just sort of thought, well, yeah, so it, it, it isn't really my imagination. Not that I thought it was my imagination, but this sort of help. He said, American exceptionalism and American innocence focus on the insidious and corrosive impact of white supremacy throughout the book is a necessary and valuable corrective to the growing tendency toward marginalizing the issue of race, even among left forces under the guise of being opposed to so-called identity politics. So at that last sentence, to the growing tendency toward marginalizing the issue of race even among left forces, under the guise of being opposed to so-called identity politics. And that's something that you can see again and again, um, sort of like um, this whinging about, oh, they're just, they're not, they don't care about class, and class is such an important issue. Yes, class is an important issue, and I see that written about on the Black Agenda report. They don't pretend that that isn't an issue, but here you have uh, s supposed people on the left um, complaining about identity politics as it is presented by the U.S. Dem as it is exploited by the U.S. Democratic Party and making out as if that's what it is and trying to sort of go, we don't need to think about all these groups, we don't need to think about black people and uh, different races and we don't need to think about, you know, um, LGBT people or whatever. We only, we, we need to just focus on this, you know, on sort of, um, capitalism or, uh, focus on imperialism and, and not not sort of like include of course we need to focus on those things but you don't exclude uh, groups and and I as I've said any group that is just pretending like they're the only important issue is their issue then that's also a problem we need to all be standing together but we also have to organize in our own groups too you know it's sort of it to, to pretend like none of these other issues of uh, LGBT and, um, and black people and, and so forth, none of those issues are important. We all need to just forget about that. It usually comes from white male uh, people, white males, basically. That's usually what you hear. You know, and, and that's sad to say, but it's true. And, it, and it's, sadly, it's usually, usually U.S. white males. And I'm just so disappointed to see the transphobia on um, people who call themselves uh, real left activists. 
and you know that it comes from a complete ignorance about it. I, I knew trans people from when I was in, in, you know, from the 80s. And I don't know, I don't understand this thing about, like, I, I just sort of thought, okay, there's a trans person. You know, I didn't sort of think, oh, hell, this is, what is this freak? You know, I mean, I don't even understand where that even comes from. Where is this sort of fear of diversity? This constant pushing back on diversity. Seriously, trans people have been around for, for fucking hundreds of years. Hundreds, thousands of years. You, you can look throughout history. If anybody did any research, they would see that. They were in the indigenous, um, na the indigenous peoples of the United States. They were, in fact, they were highly valued as, as members of the community. You know, it's like, I, I don't understand it. This sort of immediate knee-jerk reaction to anything that is different. It is, it is our undoing. It is how we've become like we are now, on the edge of extinction, um, exploiting most of the population of the planet who are non-human and killing them for completely unnecessary reasons. And we need to be vegan. I had somebody today pushing against veganism. They're an, an anti-imperialist, anti-war, and they've been wringing their hands about the climate crisis, and you present some science-based information, the, great, the biggest study to date um, on, on uh, the tremendous impact animal agriculture has on the planet and what do they do they start saying oh as if as if you can't chew gum and walk at the same time or as if as if it's you know it, it's sort of like it's ridiculous and i mean the pushback against this idea that animal agriculture is the greatest driver of what's happening in the amazon rainforest it happens to be that and has been for for decades one acre every minute of amazon rainforest has been cleared and any for most forests in the world is cleared for animal agriculture. But in the animal Amazon rainforest, one, for one acre of Amazon rainforest is cleared every minute. Until recently, now it's twice more than twice that with Bolsonaro, who's a fascist, who doesn't care at all. He's a right-wing fascist and doesn't care at all about the environment. But guess who is responsible for the Amazon rainforest being deforested and burnt? so they can make way for animal agriculture and for soy to feed animals in feedlots all over the world. Yes, that's right. Guess who? We are, if we're not vegan. So that's another issue, veganism, which is a moral imperative. Firstly, for the non-violence, you know, and, and stopping, ending this dreadful violence to trillions of animals every year. Then, for our own violence towards ourselves, because animal products don't belong in our bodies, in the amounts we eat them, and three, and we're poisoning our children with them, and three, as important as the, because it, this is um, animals' home too, other animals, we need to stop destroying the um, environment and ad seriously address the climate crisis. I showed you those memes just now. Check them out. This is science. It's not, if you're, if you're not, if you're going, oh, that's not real, then you're a science denier. If you think it's not important, then you are a science denier. So, you know, I'm getting a little tired of people, on, some people on the left who seem to, who are very intelligent, they're anti-war and they're uh, anti-imperialist and they're anti-racist and all of that, and then they're, they're saying things about, they're dumping on trans people by just, just sort of, with no actual backing of anything. They're dumping on, they're pushing back on veganism, pretending these things have never been said or there's no science to back it, or that it's some sort of personal choice that you can do on the side. It isn't a personal choice. It ceased being a personal choice when we started killing trillions of sentient animals and we've been destroying the planet. It's the major driver of the climate crisis. It ceased being a personal choice. It's a political, it's, and the political is the personal. It's actually something we should all be doing. And it's destroying the lungs of the planet, the Amazon rainforest. At now, two and a half acres, I think, a minute. So that we can have our beef, our cow flesh, and soy to feed the cows to, so that we can eat their flesh. And also, dairy is also cows. But all animal products are products that are destroying the environment in one way. Check out Sea Spiracy. The Sea Spiracy on Instagram. It's, it's a, movie, a documentary that's supposedly coming out. I don't know when. 
There's Rooney in the background. He's wearing his bird be safe collar. No, he, no, we don't like to dress up our cats. Um, you know, see, spiracy, check out it on Instagram. It is a frightening, horrific thing what we're doing in the oceans. And we're killing so many sentient animals there. Aquatic animals are sentient. Yes, that's science too. Okay, anyway, that's an interesting book. And, and, and it, it reinforces what I've been thinking about, you know, the left pushing, uh, some people on the left, so-called left, pushing back on identity politics because they, sorry, identity politics as it's presented, as it's exploited by the U.S. Democratic Party. And one has to ask, you know, why they're doing it. Why are they doing that? Marginalizing race like that and so forth. It's scary. It's scary when you see this sort of shit happening. You know, it, it's scary to me that, um, you know, when, when that sort of cancer starts spreading um, through, you know, from left bigots and left racists and white supremacists and it starts spreading, or it's already there on with some folks on the left and it just, you know, comes up because, God forbid, heaven forbid, we should have, you know, sort of any sort of equality, really. Underneath it all, you know, this unconscious sort of bigotry. I can only put it down to that, because why else would it be happening? You know, why else would it be happening? Anyway, that's really all I wanted to say. There's a bit of a rant, too. I seem to be doing a lot of that lately, but I think it's because I, I get so I get so tired of um, just sort of like, I mean, you know, when I see people on the left sort of start, you know, saying transphobic stuff that's so clueless, and I thought... You know, my goodness, you'd expect, you might expect this, you know, a decade or so ago even. But when I see that sort of stuff, I think it's so sad because these are people I admire, some of them, and that, that do otherwise do good work and then are so clueless on these issues. And seriously, is it that much of a threat? Seriously, is it that much of a threat, these people? Like, you know, these groups. Okay, I'm going to leave it here and... Uh, you know, um, we have to sort of, we really have to kind of address our own sort of things. I mean, you know, I've had to address my own um, bigotry and stuff because I grew up in a society where I'm privileged. And I also grew up in a sort of family situation where sadly there was some very strong discriminations. And you have to work on that all the time. As Ajama Baraka said from the Black Agenda Report, he said he has to work on sexism every day. You know, he's a male. And he's being brought up in an extreme, in a patriarchal world, in a sexist society, in a misogynist society, and he has to work on that every day. We all have to work on stuff every day. It's not something you can just click your fingers and it goes away. Every day we have to work on this stuff. I even have to, as a, I've been vegan for 15 years, almost 15 years now, I still have to work on some speciesist stuff. You know, because that's how we're raised and it's everywhere. Speciesism is everywhere. It's impossible, you know, not to have speciesist sorts of... Speciesism is, is part of how we've been raised and indoctrinated. So anyway, that's all I wanted to say. So thanks so much for watching. Please click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Please um, click the notifications bell. Otherwise, you don't receive um, any notifications when I drop a video. Um, I've been a bit quiet this week and there's been a number of issues that I wanted to address. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to get to all of them, but um, there might be a few videos coming out. Um, in the next few days. So thanks so much for watching. My name is Trish Roberts. You're watching Faint Signals from Vega. Till next time. Bye for now.